Okay, hello. So today is August the 30th. It's the moon is in Pisces. The sun's in Virgo, so it's the full moon in Pisces. However, I have uh, kind of organized my astrology channel in such a way that I'm focusing less on the lunations and more on the aspects and um, whatever, the different ingresses and things like that. And, um, you know, I still haven't made a video for Mercury Retrograde, so I have to admit, you know, <laughs> I'm just kind of going at my own pace here, not trying to be, you know, too perfectionistic about getting it all done, but, you know, I'm doing it as the ideas come to me. And uh, one of the transits, one of the ingresses we recently had is Mars ingressing into Libra, which is the a Venus ruled sign, and as such, Mars does not do well in a Venus ruled sign, or it's a what you call detriment, right? Because it's kind of diametrically opposed to what Libra stands for. Um, and I have to admit that I hadn't had a lot of ideas for this one, but then things just kind of like you know, it's like David Lynch has this thing about like catching the big fish where you where you you get one idea and then you get another idea or there's like the the mind has its own kind of autonomy and um you know, who knows how inspiration and how this kind of stuff works, but for me in this case, it was very much not so much trying to construct an idea for this one, but just basically trying to pay attention to what was going on in my actual physical environment, right? And one of the things that I mentioned in my last video was that we had um, forest fires, right? And the wildfire smoke. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that anyways, but the we've been dealing with our wildfire season here in um, the West Coast. And one of the things that happened, I noticed along with the, the ingress of Mars into Libra was... The, around the time this ingress happened, there was quite a dramatic thunderstorm. That was basically mainly yesterday that the, the thunderstorm was. So that was maybe, you know, a day after Mars ingress. So like maybe, but, you know, pretty damn close anyways, right? But the, you know, the thing about the thunder is that thunder and lightning, I have to admit, is associated with Zeus, Jupiter, not Mars. But it actually factors into the equation quite well because... If you do this, that Venus is in a square to Jupiter right now, right? So, and Venus being the ruler of Libra, if you want to understand Mars and Libra, you look to see what's happening with Venus, and to see that Venus is in a square with Jupiter, and then when Mars goes into Venus sign, then a sudden outburst of thunderstorms, and, um, you know, it's... The smoke is a lot better today, although if I check the fire smoke map thing, it uh, doesn't look like the fires are put out by any means from this recent th thunderstorm, but, you know, maybe it helped a little bit. Um, but it was, a, rather, regardless of that, it was a noticeable shift in atmosphere to go from this kind of, like, it was muggy, but, like, dry and smoky and just kind of yucky, to being, like, there's a kind of a refreshing change of energy from the thunderstorm, right? And, um, one of the other things, you know, the main, the thing that I noticed that really kind of, um, struck my, struck me as being a kind of a Mars and Libra situation kind of developed naturally out of me as I say, I take my dogs for a walk in the morning, right, to try to, um, you know, to try to keep up with my healthy lifestyle, right, and that I'm taking my dogs for walks every morning, and now they're just hooked on it, so they probably wouldn't let me, uh, <laughs> let me, you know, the dog, whether I want to or not, the dogs are keeping me in check by, by demanding walks all the time now, um, and as I, you know, my last video I made on this channel, I was kind of, like, First of all, lamenting the fact that, I mean, this is something that I can go into later, because I think on one hand, it's true that at some point in time, I was making videos sort of questioning the motivation, the financial motivation for 
pursuing different projects like this that on one hand you know i've been able to make a lot more money doing astrology than i have like trying to make electronic music and selling tracks like selling music or something like that so like it seems like to be to pursue uh you know if you want to do it like as a career to pursue a career as astrologer is more for the amount of money that i put into it versus the amount of money i get out of it it's more encouraging to, to pursue astrology than it is to be like i'm going to be Aphex twin or boards of canada or something like that you know like this isn't the 90s and i'm not signed to a major record label like it's probably regardless of whether if i can make something that sounds like boards of canada or Aphex twin I'm probably not going to be signed to Warp Records, right? Whereas I can at least make a bit of money um, doing uh, astrology or something like this, right? But the, I had been hitting this... I basically was questioning, trying, like, do you do everything to make money or not? And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do what my creative process leads me to want to do and not stress so much about the money thing and then I was making these videos though where I am getting all stressed out and lamenting the fact that I'm not making money even though I kind of lay, laid out previous to this that I would just make you know just do it for fun and not worry so much about the money side of it so I'm kind of like contradicting myself in some sense or um or but it was not really so much that it was like the 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 pressure to do things that are more grounded in the material practicality and that this attitude that doing things like astrology is not practical or not useful. And I think that kind of factors into part of the conversation that I want to have with this video. Um, but one of the things that, you know, like it kind of weighing on me is that in my actual grounded experience of life going around and, you know, seeing men who are working manly jobs like you know that it's not considered manly to sit around drinking tea and reading tarot cards to be a man is to like go out there with your chainsaw and your screw or whatever your table saw and your screw your screw gun and your uh whatever right like you're going and being a carpenter or you know doing manly you know the 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 vital work necessary to build shelter and provide for the family and all the, and not just you know faffing around with a bunch of tarot cards right um, and one of the things, anyways, so walking the dogs, there was a young man who was not even a part of a road crew, but a, a doing sidewalk repairs, right? And the, I had to admit that, like, after this guy was done, I'm now walking around as I walk my dogs every morning, and I'm looking at the work they had this guy do, and it really seems kind of trivial to me, because... I mean, I'm, you know, like, there's all these, it, it almost kind of, to me, what can I say? Like, have you heard of the no broken window policy? Like, there was this thing where they, um, in certain, I think this came about in the 80s, maybe, but it was like a response to things like the crack cocaine epidemic or the meth, the meth epidemic or, you know, problems of slummy neighborhoods. And basically, they, they had this policing idea that rather than to actually address the source of the problem in terms of, you know, trying to deal with addiction or trying to deal with the drug trade or trying to deal with that side of it, there was this attitude that was like the no broken window policy, which is to be like, to be very, to please, and also like things like jaywalking, right? Which is to basically make, be very strict about policing things that are not actually related to the problem and to give this sense that like this is a neighborhood where there are no broken windows there are no graffiti there's no um you know every little imperfection in the sidewalk is smoothed over and that giving this sort of like it doesn't actually relate to whether or not people are using drugs or people are engaged in crime but if you make everything look ev clean and proper and just give the people the impression that like this is not the neighborhood where you want to do that and but oftentimes that just turns into a kind of you know zones of exclusion or pushing crime and pushing poverty into a certain area and then saying this is a rich people's neighborhood where we don't we don't put up with that kind of thing right um in um but, but why do i bring this up is because so i would look i don't know I have to admit too, like there's certain memories I did I, way, way back when I went to um, 
Belgrade in Serbia, right? And it was like such an interesting experience to me because you were in the middle of the downtown of the city and like every there's the sidewalks and stuff like that were just falling apart and you had stray dogs everywhere and you had buildings that were like still bombed out from the war that they had. And it's like, there's something about, you know, like I have, that was only, I was only in Eastern Europe for like about a month or something. And that I have Eastern European lineage. Um, that's where my ancestors are from. But there's this whole thing about like living in a place like where I live now. It's like I only can really relate to this place by comparing by comparison and contrast to other places. And it's such a it's such a wild trip to go to somewhere like you know, like Eastern Europe, where, I mean, they're obviously in Ukraine, there's a terrible war going on right now, but that there's like, um, well, yeah, where people, like, there's bigger priorities than whether the sidewalk has everything smoothed out in it or not, right? Um, and having a bit of perspective on things, and it, and this, there's my relationship to the neighborhood that I live, just, it feels, like, it feels weird to me in that respect, um, and there's like the what I mean, I haven't even got to my point yet. It's not just about the what was interesting was not just this whole thing about like doing this road work to sort of correct every all these little imperfections that I didn't even notice in the sidewalk in the first place uh, that are maybe kind of trivial and like the the government money going into that kind of a thing, um, but that immediately after that there was um, a spurt of graffiti around, along the same area, right? Where the same area where they did all the, um, this really kind of trivial, as, at least in my opinion, trivial kind of sidewalk road work. Now there are, like, the, the stop sign is tagged, like, the, the telephone poles are tagged, the mailbox, the community mailboxes have really bad, like, this, like, throw-up black graffiti on it. And even the motel in the neighborhood has really, like, it's not even, you know, like, I also have to say that I lived in Melbourne for a little bit, and that Melbourne has, like, a kind of a cool street art scene. Um, and that, but, so, like, when you see this stuff, it's like, these kids are just, like, doing things like throwing up bubble letters without even, like, having fills, right? Like, it's not even, like, a color fill with bubble letters that would be called, like, bombing or something. You're literally just, do, like, doing, like, outlines on a, uh, on the side of a motel. And, it, you know, how old are these kids? And, like, do, <laughs> it's really kind of, like, not even really, it's kind of embarrassingly bad graffiti. And it also kind of, like, looks, like, this is the whole thing about Mars and Libra, is that, okay, like, I'll give you the fact that it sort of, like, this whole, like, I was complaining on Facebook about like, the general white picket fence kind of quality of the neighborhood and that in some way, you know, Libra is about the scales, it's about the balance. And I kind of feel like it to me, this sort of resonates because it's sort of like if you take a neighborhood that's already very sort of clean cut and you and you get too perfectionistic about it, about smoothing out all the imperfections on the sidewalk and, you know, it's... There's a, there's another example that I'm not really sure if I should, like part of me is like is it would be bad to use this example but I think it's it goes with the whole point so I might as well use it right that um the, the, I have to admit you know I was talking to a friend about this at one point in time and the friend that I was talking to did not sympathize with my position and did not see my point that I was trying to make um, but not, what I was talking about is just like the passive aggressive signage that people would put up to discourage uh p people just leaving dog shit on their lawns and stuff like that right and the thing about it is that to me i like i take dog whatever poop bags out with me and i pick up after my dogs and so i mean i try to be responsible about it but there's something about going for a walk and like having so many people that are really look like really rich people who have luxury automobiles and that probably pay for people to clean their house and pay for people to do their yard work and that are and are you know probably the the elite of society and having the all these signs up on their yard saying pick up after your dog you know it's like you know, like, fuck you guys. I, mean, I have this kind of attitude that if it's some guy with a fucking BMW and, like, thinking he's, like,
like king of the world, like paying people to do all these ch chores for him. Like you can pick up, like I don't do, like am I really doing you that much of a favor picking up my dog shit? Like do I really sympathize if there's dog shit on your lawn if you get how you know like get to live in the lap of luxury? And yet, but the, but the thing is at the same time, so I actually do though. I pick up my dog shit, but I when I walk around, I do actually notice that there are a lot of people who don't, right? There are actually a lot of people who don't pick up after their dogs. And that I think that there's this kind of thing that it's not, you know, it may be other people who have BMWs who are really, that feel like they're, they're too good to pick up after their dogs. So maybe it's not really even, it's like, well, you can't really say, you know, I don't know for sure who it is that's not picking up after their dogs, right? But on this sort of point about whether or, you know, this, it's a kind of a, I would classify this as a fairly trivial matter, right? And that, but I, one day I was walking my dogs and I saw this old guy, you know, I'm, I'm a proper well, elderly dude with white hair and all this kind of stuff and slow down. And this wasn't me. He was talking to another guy. He slowed down and there's another old guy walking his dog. And this guy was like slowed down to verbally abuse this guy saying, you better pick up after your dog. Blah, 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 blah. Like just, just, just yell at the guy from the side of the road. And I was like, this like for me, this was particularly funny. Well, I mean, it was like, because before I was living in this neighborhood in downtown Nanaimo in Vancouver Island. And, you know, I'm not, saying that this is like better. I mean, this is actually in a way far worse, right? But like one day I was going for a walk in downtown in Naimo and I saw a woman walking down the street and in a similar fashion, there was a man in a vehicle who was verbally abusing this woman from a vehicle. But like what he was saying, he was saying, you're just a no good slut. You're just a, a you know, like a, a horror, all this kind of stuff like this. And basically that this woman had cheated on him with some other guy. And he's like, and for all the good things I do to you, you're not faithful to me and all this kind of stuff. And it was like really kind of, I don't know. I was, I'm not really sure, you know, I wasn't going to step in and get involved because I don't want to get involved in some other person's drama or something like that. But it's like, you know, it, it, it to me, it paints me the scene where, Downtown Nanaimo was a place where it had a lot of different shit going on, right? It did have a lot of people doing drugs. It had a lot of problems. It had probably a lot of domestic issues. Um, and, it, and one of the things, evidently, was that it had people being unfaithful to their partners and, and resulting disputes happening in public on the street because of that. You know, the, the neighborhood where I live now, you know, the only public dispute is whether or not you're picking up after your dog shit. Right. And it's kind of like, you know, I mean, and the thing is, that, like, personally, I, I would not be able to relate to this position of watching an old man, you know, yell at another old man about who's picking up after their dog shit without, you know, having these other uh, things to compare it to. Right. And like, and I don't know, maybe to some person out there, this is completely reasonable. This isn't ridiculous. But to me, this seems kind of, the whole situation seems kind of ridiculous, right? But the whole, this whole thing about, like, there's, Libra is all about the balance. It's all about, like, the social contract. It's also, Venus is all about kind of, like, keeping things nice, right? Keeping your neighborhood free of graffiti, free of broken windows, free of dog shit or whatever, or keeping your marital disputes off the street or something like that, like you, you would have in Nanaimo. But I mean, it just feels, you know what I'm saying? It's like the sense that this neighborhood feels so goddamn uptight, right? And that in some way, there's this thing about like, if you try to be so perfectionistic about it, where you're having every little nook and cranny that's off of the sidewalk filled in, it's like, it's asking for something to balance it out, even if that is some, like, teenagers who do really shitty graffiti to just draw graffiti everywhere. Now, the whole thing is whether or, I don't know if the teenagers were, or, or I don't even know if they were teenagers. Whoever did the graffiti, I don't know if they were actually motivated by any of the, this stuff, right? Like, uh, what what motivated them to go on a graffiti spree? It may, it may not even have crossed their minds 
anything about like you know how the recent road work and the sidewalks or anything like that it could have just been a coincidence right but what we're talking about is the meaningful resonance of correlations observed along with this, this kind of astrological phenomenon right and um so that was kind of like, this is what's resonating for me today with the Mars and Libra transit. Um, there was something it, in a more of a, a bigger, okay, rather than talking about all this mundane little stuff, there was the, there's another, there's another thing that came to mind. Um, and this is, you know, it relates to the principles, the transcendent virtues of the good, the beautiful, and the true, right? And the, th the thing is about, like, the good is, like, how people tend to define the good is that if you are defining the good from a position of your own self-interest, right? That what is good is what is good for me and my self-interest is identified as a person who lives in this society who needs to survive and live and wants to live a you know a comfortable life and all this kind of stuff and uh, to be functional or whatever you know there's all these kinds of um you know the good as defined for what is good for me but then we get this whole thing about we have a when you have a bunch of individuals who all define the good as their own self-interest, there's obviously, you know, when you pit one individual against another, there's a sort of... Mars has to do with competition is what I'm trying to get at, right? And so that the 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 good that, that is out of self-interest is kind of relativized to there being a whole bunch of other people who may have competing self-interest, right? And then... So there's this whole thing about Libra being the scales, being the sign of balance and the, the balance between, you know, is your sense of self-interest infringing on the well-being or the good, the, what is good for other people's interest? And then there's something about this too, which I have to just, uh, I mean, I don't see how I can avoid going in this direction with it, but I have a bit of confusion when it comes to why tr the idea of transhumanism gets such a bad rap these days, right? Because, I mean, I do understand in a sense that if we identify ourselves as human beings in a world w that includes things, includes the other in the sense of the non-human, that, you know, we still, it's still, uh, there's a basic sense that we want to survive and we want to have a livable life as human beings and that it's kind of redundant to uh to you know why we value our own self-interest as a the human species or whatever right but the the whole thing to, is about the the transcendental idea of the good is that just as we can look at you know a bunch of individual human beings competing for their own self-interest and there being a kind of a higher virtue or a higher principle of balance that is like you know if you if your self-interest is so you know overblown that it infringes on the self-interest of others then it's out of balance right but the whole thing is that when we when we keep working up these different levels and we get to you know you know you could say your self your self interest as an individual versus you you belong to a family or something like that or a community or a larger social group and so you have these different spheres of influence and what is good for the individual what is good for the group what is good for the community what is good for the human race what is good for the whole planet earth and all this kind of stuff at some point you run into this thing where you get farther and farther away from the good of the individual the good of what is good for the self-interest and that there we are fit into we are like one little puzzle piece in a bigger picture that is so infinitely vast we cannot even comprehend it right um if we if you take on the infinite nature of the universe and all this kind of stuff right um that 
there is at some point in time the higher virtue of justice may become something that is actually very mysterious and especially the more that we are identify you know with this whole thing of our own self-interest and what is good for me as a person as being the good, that there is a growing sense of the uh, this other, sh the shadow of that, basically. The unknown in, in contrast to that. And, and um, I think there's something about Mars and Libra which kind of goes with this, which is like the, you know, that there are, like, tipping the scales or whatever and the competition and that there's something about, like, the... You know, like Mars in some way is about making, is about puncturing, is about cutting, is about like, you know, that we have, we have this sort of like bubble of self, right? To like, to burst the bubble of self and see something beyond that. See beyond the wall, see beyond the barrier, see beyond the blockade that we set up to just say, this is my own self-interest. And, you know, but in the bigger picture though, there might be certain things that like, there is, this this whole question about people like do you believe that the universe is an inherently just place right and the question is that is justice something that human beings define for themselves and their own social relations to with other human beings or does justin or does justice extend beyond the human into like justice towards our relation to animals you know like or, or plants or something like that and the thing is by doing that by relating to let's say animals or the non-human do we do we respect the difference that makes them not human or do we simply just expand the human into something that encompasses everything else right and to the point where we can be like even when it comes to you know let's say like we're talking about aliens or something like that or going beyond the you know the realm of our worldly life on planet earth that is like is do, or do we just equivalent you know it's like in star trek where they deal with all these aliens but all the aliens basically are like you know attractive humans with green skin you know what i mean like they're not really aliens are they if they if we just give them human form and treat them like humans or take a human characteristic and exaggerate it right like like how the vulcans in uh in Star Trek, just take the human thing about being logical and rational and just exaggerate it, or the Klingons take the warlike thing and exaggerate it. And then we say, and we, we sort of project our own humanity onto the rest of the universe rather than respecting there may be things that are completely other than the human. And, um, you know, what is good in the human self interest versus there could be this, there could, this the self that contains is absolutely infinite. That is really, that goes beyond the limits of the human, right? Um, what is the, I don't even know what the point of all that is actually. Though, but it, to me, for some reason, to me, this goes with the deeper understanding of the balance of what, what justice, like the idea that there's like some sort of a natural balance to nature, to the natural world, right? And this, there's this idea of like, People, there's a lot of people that might be atheist or may not believe in God or may not believe in like the the something like justice as a divine principle because they 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 say like look the world isn't is inherently is just not just it's not fair it's not balanced and actually if there's anything that we have to do like you know creating legal reforms or, or creating a, a system of court or creating a system of law it's like it's to deal with human affairs and it's to introduce something that is actually quite kind of artificial that if if you just let the natural world play out as it would be it would be complete chaos and so we have to intervene and we have to impose our idea of what justice is on a essentially chaotic and unjust environment and why i bring up this whole thing about the transhumanism thing or the going beyond the humanistic self-centered idea of what is good for me or what is good for my family is that what if the what if there actually is a sense of balance or a sense of but it's just so it's so not like whatever this balance whatever this sense of cosmic justice is um calibrated to we have to consider that their own their, their our own human role in all of in all of existence is so it's small that you know it may not really um there may be a sense of justice that's just so 
far out there, so mysterious that we that all sorts of things happen and we just can't see it, right? Or that we can only do we only make sense of things as being just and fair insofar as they're fair to me in my you know self-centered opinion and my self-centered position based on where I'm standing or can or can you like get get out of that and, and and see some sort of like cosmic justice that is completely transcendent to the plight of the individual or the plight of even like the human civilization right um I don't know you know this is just what's on my mind today anyways, so I'll leave it at that. This is a half an hour video. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Have a good day, everybody.